going to do a uh, quick, very basic tutorial on how to model a table. So, start with uh, I'm in my create panel, or my um, yeah, creation panel, and I'm going to go to. Notice that I'm in geometry. I'm going to go to box. And I'm just going to create a box. And I'm just going to build it, let's say, in the top viewport. Give it a little thickness. Of course, you can change the size of that box. Let's just do a table about like that. Yeah, like that. And uh, I'm going to turn this. Well, I won't do that yet. I just want to show you a little bit about this. Under length segments, width segments, and height segments, let me just bump up the width segments to length to 3 and width to 3 and then I'm going to right click this box and go to convert to editable poly and now that I'm in editable poly I'm going to go to vertex sub object mode and in my top viewport I'm going to capture with an implied window press drag release all the vertices that are in this row here or this column and notice that I've got ignore back facing turned off. So that means I get the vertices on both sides rather than just the ones that I can see in this view. So I'll go to my move tool and I'll just drag using this X arrow until those vertices are fairly close to the edge. I'm going to do the same thing with this other column of vertices and drag it to this side. I'm going to drag this row of vertices this way and an implied window to grab those vertices at the bottom using the Y arrow to drag them straight down here. Okay, now in this particular view I want to be able to see all my edges so I'm going to right click where it says perspective and go to edged faces and let me just maximize this view so I can do that by clicking right in the corner here where it says maximize, minimize ver viewports. So I'll maximize that. I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And what I want to do is create the legs for this table now. Now I want to make this table so it's sitting upright. So I'm going to spin this around and model from underneath. So I could use my view control here. It's the second from the very right. Uh, it's called the orbit tool. Now I have a grid apparent here, so I can hit G and turn that grid off. G turns it on and off. Now I want to build the legs out of here. So here's what I'm going to do. In sub-object mode, I'm going to go to this polygon button and grab all of these polygons holding the control key down. In fact, let me do that a little bit simpler. I'll just do one at first. I just click it. It's selected. I'm going to press and drag to get my panel where I want to see it. And there's an extrude button, and I'm going to click on the, ex the little square to the right of the extrude button. So I'm just going to increase the extrusion amount. And that's how I can make one leg at a time. But let's go a little bit faster. I've um, got one selected, hold the control key down, and click the other ones with my left mouse click. And instead of using extrude, I'll use bevel. And bevel's kind of nice because it bevels and extrudes at the same time. So I can change my outline amount and narrow those down as they go, as they extrude. Okay, so that's it. I'll hit OK. And I'm going to change this back to my view from the top. And I might, you might want a little bit more fancy table, so let me just do one more thing on this. So I'll pick this uh, inside polygon, and I'm going to do an inset. So I can inset a little bit in, and sometimes you'll see these types of uh, wood designs on tables, and uh, we'll take it in just a little bit and hit OK. And maybe what you want is on the uh, all the way around here, it's brought down just a little bit. So I could do that too. I could say um, bevel, and it's going up way too high, so I'll just bring it down and change the outline amount so that it's big enough to see otherwise it can cross itself and look really strange let me show you how those things can cross themselves let's go back up for a second this is something you don't want to do 
So we've got this uh, kind of a lip coming up out of the top of the table. If I change the outline amount to a big enough value or a small enough value, it'll cross itself. See, we do not ever want to do that. So I'll bring the height back down. And we just have a little bit of a design in the table. Okay, now, um, now that we've got the table, let's look at it in all the four views. So normally you've got your top view, front view, left view, and your perspective or you for user view. Um, depending on what you're doing, sometimes the perspective view works better, sometimes user view works better. If I right click it, I can go to views and change whichever one I want. Okay, and now why don't we put a material on this table? So I can drag my toolbar over until I get to materials, or just type in M for material. And uh, let's just make sure you can see this. And there's my first material swatch. I'm just going to grab uh, this name here and say this is my table material, or whatever you want to type in there. Now, normally for standard material, here's what you do. You go to, see the little blue ball here? You select the material swatch, you go to the blue ball on the left, and you select material library. And sometimes I'll go to this viewable by uh, actual images or icons. And I'm just going to look around for one that looks like it'll work. Concrete, stucco, fabric, ground, leaves. And I'm going to go with this metal dark gold. So I'm just going to double click that right there on the round material. Now this is selected, correct? So I'm going to go to this select, uh, put material to selected object. It's the third icon over. It's a little sphere going to a cube. And then I'm also going to click on this Show Material in Viewport. It looks like a little checked box. And then I'm pretty much done. Let me just close the Material Browser. Let's do one more thing. In my Modify panel, um, I've got my object selected. I've clicked on this Editable Poly so it's no longer just some sub-object selected, but it's the whole entire object is selected. And now I can go to my down arrow and I'm going to add a UVW map modifier. So you can see the modifier has been added. What kind of modifier do I want to add? I'm going to add a box modifier. It's probably the best thing for objects like this for a real simple quick material. And uh, let's just render that. So I'll do a quick render. Rendering uh, I think we got a quick render here somewhere. Now here's my render dialog box. Um, I think I have it set to save a file. Is that true? No, I don't. So that's good. I just want a quick render. I'm not going to save any files. I'm just going to make a single render. So I'll hit render. And this is what I get. So that's our first standard material, first modeled object.